Tjena, tjena. Hello. Every time, I, every time I meet you, Matt, you say something in Swedish. I try, I try. Try. <laughs> Yeah, it is compulsive. Paolo, do you know any Swedish? Uh, not much. <laughs> People <laughs> like will teach me stuff, and then it's uh, hard to retain it every time we leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I ever tried Swedish, I asked I th our label guy at the time, is when we were opening up for Iron Maiden at the Globen. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I asked him, and he said something that is not Shena, but Hurmurni. What, right. what is that? Yeah, is how that, are you? It is? Okay. Was, for, and I remember that was... For, for a number of people. How are you? Yeah. And I plural, think that yeah. it, Swedish and <laughs> Dutch took me the longest to like ingrain into my brain. Dutch is pretty tricky, too. Yeah, like, that sounds like very good. It's like, a, yeah. it's like a kindergarten lesson yeah. everywhere we go. Yeah, <laughs> it is. the basics. But, uh, well, and then there's French, which just seems made up. A thing that all these guys always laugh at me for, we did a meet and greet, and I was like to... I like to be respectful of everyone from a specific country, yes. learn a couple words. And there's a kid from Singapore. I was like, oh, how do I say thank you in your language? He's like, thank you? And these guys that was, are... Yeah, that we, we kept making a joke that eventually someone's just like, oh, thank Yeah, like, you, you just say like, thank you. I was yeah. like, they all were laughing yeah, at me. We laughing. But you should, you should ask them. How, good morning. Say it. Good morning. Hey. Oh. Ah, <laughs> good. Look at that. It's like school. Ooh. So we're, we're <laughs> going to... Right, first day of school. Today we're doing adding... We're going to have a Q&A thing here. Uh, uh, you guys are going to be able to ask them some questions. But I want to know, um, tell me a little bit about the new album. It's coming out in October, yes. The Sin and The Sentence. Um, well, uh, it is been about a year and a half, almost two years since we started really working on it. So we were kind of working on it on the down low while we were touring. Uh, we really came together and made it November of last year when we got Alex into the band. Uh, we kind of threw him into the deep end because we were like, you got to learn an entire headlining set and we're going to start writing new music. So we kind of kind of rolled the dice with that one, but Alex ended up really stepping up, really crushed it. Um, I guess we just really wanted to make the most trivium, trivium album we could make, like the culmination of everything we've been writing uh, and it really just kind of came down to us being in our rehearsal room and just working together and not letting anyone outside of Matt, Corey, and myself into the process. And then, of course, Alex. Uh, but no one else. We didn't send any demos to anyone. Like, we were kind of like telling the label, like, oh, yeah, we're ready to record. And I remember uh, our A&R dude was like, dude, I've got to, like, hear something. And so we, like, flew him down. But we didn't send demos out to anyone. And I think by retaining... Uh, all the music for ourselves, it was like the most, uh, the, the perfect culmination of what we've been doing throughout the years. Yeah, people, it seems like everyone was really shocked when all of a sudden a new video came out and new things were coming out. Because what was funny is when we were actually recording the record, I was like video game streaming on Twitch and people were like, why are you playing games? You should be making a new record right now. I'm like, well, we're on vacation. I just kept saying we're on vacation. Yeah. Or in actuality, we're in California recording the record. And um, I guess that was just nighttime, so I wasn't sleeping. So I'd do the record wow. and go play video games online. Um, but what was really great and what Trivium always does is we're always reactionary. We look at what we've done and we look at what all bands are doing. And we've been noticing definitely, and we did this on Vengeance Falls, so we're, we're guilty as well, but bands just posting on their own social media accounts, you'll never believe what's coming from this studio recording. Here's a picture of a beer bottle in my shoe in, in the, the studio, uh, and this is chord, cool. Guitar chords. And we didn't want to do that because everyone else was doing that. So what we did instead was we decided that we completely finished the record, finished the videos. There's documentary stuff coming. There's all sorts of things coming still. Record everything, control it, make our own schedule where everything can be released. Because if you think about a movie, you don't see behind the scenes pictures from the director first. You see a trailer first, and then things start to come from there. So that's what our idea with was with Sin in the Sentence, release the trailer first, which was the first song, and everything from there. Sounds, sounds like the way to do it. So what would you say? It's, a, it's a record number eight. What, what's the biggest difference between Trivium today from... 02 or 2004 when Ascendancy came? Right? I think we've learned how to bridge our melodic side and our heavy side a lot better. Um, obviously, we're probably the only people that have heard the entire record, but to explain it to people, like the heaviest moments of the record don't feel like we're a different band from a song like The Heart From Your Hate. It feels like a complete thought. Um, Matt being able to sing and scream opens up so many opportunities. So we have to really find a way to balance that and not go too far one way or the other. It's always about balancing those two worlds. And 
like some of the heaviest stuff, I think like you were saying, Other Worlds, which is a song you guys will hear soon, um, you're like, wow, this is a really heavy song, but you notice like there's really no screaming, only like little background parts, and we didn't have to do screaming to make the song really intense. So I feel like we've, we've come a long way as writers, and we've really understand what we can do and what Trivium is about, and it makes writing songs now a lot easier. In the past, like we'd have a song like Dying in Your Arms, and then you'd have a song like Ascendancy, and now we're able to balance everything out all at once. Cool. Are you guys ready for some questions from Let's the do it. please? Right. Yeah. Anyone got a question? Yeah. Anything about any anything. random thing? You can ask thing, absolutely bands, anything you've music. ever wondered. Don't be shy. This is why we're here. Actually. Although, while they're thinking there about it, let me, let me Hi, what's your name? Still. Hi, my name is Emil. Oh, Hi. Yep. Hi. Uh, when you started off practicing your uh, respective uh, instruments, guitar and bass, how did you approach uh, like practicing? Um, like the first thing, and this is like what people like when you're first starting, it's the hardest part. Is the first couple months is really, really hard. Yeah. Like when you pick up an instrument, it's really frustrating because you like want to dive right into playing like the craziest stuff and you're just barely can like make a string, make a sound. And getting through that first year is really integral. And it's just taking the instrument and practicing very methodically, slowly, not rushing to try to play like the hardest thing first because that's the best way to burn out from yeah. playing instruments. You have to start simple. And even still being this far into playing an instrument, you sometimes have to go back to the roots, the fundamentals, and make sure you can always do those things because it's so important. And that's something I always think about. Don't like always rush to just do the craziest thing first. Yeah, it's constant practice is so important, and that's something that we see sometimes in younger bands. They they don't want to practice as much off tour. Or I've talked to some other singers. They're like, yeah, I don't really sing when we're rehearsing for tour, but you have to. And that's one of the reasons why I was able to rebuild my voice and I think make it better than ever is because on time off, like even a day after, or probably two days after coming home from this press tour and the European tour, I'll start practicing again just on my own. And it's like five days a week, two to four hours a day. And I like to do that, and we all like to do that on our respective instruments to make sure when we go on tour, it's easy. I like to sing for four hours a day, five days a week. So when I go on tour and do three in a row, 90 minutes a piece, it's easier. And to keep that stamina it's up. It's also so fun, too. Yeah. Like, playing an instrument, I think, like, Should you always have to be, love yeah. it. Like, just saying, like, practice, practice, practice makes it sound like work. Picking up an instrument and, like, tuning everything else out in the world is the greatest feeling when you, like, love an instrument. Good question. Thanks. Any more? Oh, they're in the back. Hi, what's your name? Hi, uh, my name is William. Uh, I was wondering when you, um, your sort of writing approach uh, to music, um, do you base it a lot of music theory or is it just based on your own musicality and what you feel sounds good? Um, These are good yeah, questions. Yeah, good. <laughs> I, um, for me personally, like, I'll start writing to just what sounds good to my ear and... I always know that like when we get into the rehearsal spot, like Corey and Matt are usually really good with theory. And I know enough to like make sense of stuff and know when things are wrong. But I, I'm always like, if it sounds good to my ear, it's probably going to work. And if there is something really weird, like when we have to start figuring out harmonies or anything like that, like that's when I kind of, I like toss it over to like Corey because he's like the harmony master and like he knows he right knows away. Theory. Yeah, he knows right away that stuff. So I'm kind of lucky to have someone that does that so I can just worry about like the other, oh, what if we just mash these two things together? This sounds cool. And I think that's what makes like Trivium unique is that we don't worry too much about the theory, but we have enough knowledge between the three of us to where we at least know like we're in the ballpark of, of some stuff. But I think it's always great to start with does it sound right to your ear? Does it feel right? Are you having fun playing it? And usually that's the right approach, whatever it is. Even if it's a dissonant thing, maybe that's what you needed to get out of the song. And theory is just sort of like, it helps you start, it helps you to understand. I think you should really learn it when you're starting uh, your instrument, but don't rely on it too much. And don't, don't write songs just based on like rules other people wrote. I agree. There's, it can definitely be limiting. There was a minute on Shogun where I thought was trying to learn theory because I, I knew a little bit in school, like I played saxophone in school and, and 
it's better to know the fundamentals of things, know the fundamentals of guitar playing, the fundamentals roughly of songwriting, but then creating by ear. I think that's always better. Even Josh Wilbur, our producer, he said, he's like, I don't know theory. I just like to make what I like to make. And when we're doing vocal harmonies on this record, and there's a ton of vocal harmonies, by the way, we didn't know what we were looking for. We're just like, let's try things and see what works. So it's important to know how to do things, but not to, I, I find that with myself, theory makes me think I have to go too much with rules because I mean, my father was in the military, so I was like rules and regiment, and I get too committed to rules. So I have to just not think about rules, and I do better. Yeah. Nice, good question. Anyone else? There has to be more. Here we go. Hi, hi. What's your name? Ludwig. Hey, Ludwig. Uh, I was just wondering what inspired you to make music. The, you know. I initially picked up guitar. Did you, did you play guitar before saxophone or? Yeah, let me think. It was probably around the same time, like oh, 11, right, right. 10 or 11. I picked it up because it was like the cool thing to do and I didn't have another thing. My dad always had a guitar around. I was into pop punk at the time. So I started uh, just, I tried out for a pop punk band. Damn It by Blink-182 was the tryout song. I didn't get into the band. I, was I played really, that riff yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was really let down that I didn't make it in. And then a kid lent me the Black Album by Metallica and I heard metal and I was like, this is the kind of music I want to be able to play. And when I tried to emulate it, I recognized it took a lot of time to get good at that. So I played a lot until I was able to play those songs. And I did a talent show, was asked to try it for Trivium when I was 13, and have been in the band ever since. So it was thankfully hearing metal is what made me get serious, because I heard this is more difficult than I thought I'd be able to play. So I need to get as good enough, as, as, as good to play this stuff as I can. Kind of uh, the same for me, it was like, playing a festival at our school, the Italian festival it was called. And uh, me and my friends, we played, we played The Offspring, played Blink-182, played Metallica from The Bell Tolls. And I was supposed to sing, but I chickened out. And then the, just the experience of playing live, even though it was in front of like people at my school, that was just, it was exhilarating, you know, getting to see people have fun and like being up on stage and, just the experience of that was really sort of lighting the spark for me. And then it was like seeing Metallica, the King Nothing video, watching the live shit binge and purge. It was like, I gotta do this, this is cool. And it's crazy because like, I feel like so many people have that similar sort of starting point for us. Like, oh, it's like seeing Metallica on MTV. Like I wanna play guitar, play bass or drums. And that's how we started. Have you guys, I mean, obviously you're big rock stars yourselves, uh, but have you guys ever been able to talk to the guys uh, that you've been inspired by? Like, for instance, yeah. Metallica and say like... Yeah, we saw actually, um, saw Metallica a few weeks ago in Orlando. All right. And uh, we got to see Kirk for a few minutes, like in, just before they, they went on. So, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, they're all s like super nice people. And I mean, we toured with Iron Maiden and... They're just such cool dudes. Like, they invite us whenever they weren't going home, like, after a show. They'd be like, hey, you guys can come and have some drinks, yeah. like, where we're staying. And it's just crazy because, you know, this is the music you listen to all your life. And then you meet these people, and they're really normal and nice. And then you're like, oh, it's kind of, I guess that's kind of how we are. We just like to have drinks after the show and hang out. And it's a great experience. Yeah, I remember the first time I met James, like, I was definitely, like, <clears throat> stuttering and mumbling. I was like, uh, you, you're my biggest f f fan. And he's like, what? I was like, oh, my name's Matt. <laughs> yeah, so, but they're, they're so cool, so welcoming, and it is, it is always great meeting our heroes. And when we tore with Inflames, I was, like, gushing over them. I was like, you guys, we wouldn't exist without you. I mean, I was the kind of Inflames fan. I would buy their bootleg live VHSs on eBay, and I owned every T-shirt, and my room was, like, covered in Flames posters. And when we met them, I told them that. It was, we're, we're fans of music first. They're really nice people too. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, what are you guys? Uh, what's in your headphones right now? What are you guys listening to, music-wise? All over the place. Um, yeah. This record is definitely getting into some like old punk stuff, like listening to Dead Kennedys and Descendants and Bad Religion. Um, all of us in the band have been really into like the new Architect album. Um, the new Stick to Your Guns EP is incredible. Uh, new Fit for an Autopsy is awesome. So there's a lot of great modern metal happening. New Star Tranquility is incredible. I think yeah. it's one of the best records they've ever released. Um, so much good music. So much good stuff. Yeah, it's just like a mix of all of that. Then I'll kind of dive into like classic stuff. Um, obviously, Iron Maiden, Deep Purple. Then I'll jump into something like really random, like Run the Jewels. And then I'll like... <laughs> jump into some random like time period like maybe i'll get into grunge for 
a little bit, and then I'll listen to some Alice in Chains, Soundgarden. I'm just all over the place. I'm always searching for this something new to kind of just spark an idea where you never know where it'll come from. Cool. Any more questions? Over there. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Oscar. He has a name. Uh, Flames T-shirt. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, you noticed. Uh, okay, so a non-music related question. Uh, why did you get into streaming? It seems kind of random. You're streaming yeah, right now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm streaming you guys. I hope it's still working. It's hard to tell. Um, I've always loved video games. And I mean, I grew up playing video games. I beat Mario 1 when I was like four years old. Final Fantasy was always a big part of my middle school and high school life. Um, there's even like Final Fantasy references in our songs. Like oh, what? Strife. Cloud, oh, there you go. Cloud Strife. That's right. Yeah, but that's not what the song's about, but it was a reference. <laughs> the Calamity with Genova from Final Fantasy VII. Um, so I've always been into video games and we played a show in Barcelona and we got to meet some YouTubers that are like big Tribune fans, but they're also metal fans. And they've like one of them, Jordy, a buddy of mine, he's got like six and a half million subscribers on YouTube. And I was like, holy shit. So was, he started talking about like, I was asking him about what he does. And that inspired me to try doing some covers on YouTube at first. And then my sister and Paulo both recommended kind of at the same time, you should do Twitch because it's like video game streaming. And I started with that, started on console. And apparently console like isn't the pro gaming thing and it's more PC as you guys know as I know now too I didn't know that at first I'm, I'm still playing the, <laughs> the console thing yeah consoles like you can't be a real first-person shooter guy unless you're on PC I am not the first person can you shooter. play people like between console them? the console no uh, no you can't is it like if, when you play the the bass with the pick and you're not supposed to because you're supposed yeah, to I get well, maybe not that uh, maybe it's not that. more like <laughs> I, it was pretty crazy I didn't believe that how much more accurate because I was getting pretty good at overwatch on ps4 how much more accurate the PC is it's like the difference between playing guitar hero and playing a real guitar oh, that's, that's what a better analogy me. it was like sure. drastically I playing uh, like when I was in high school playing like Medal of Honor on uh, like a really this was like when the internet really kind of sucked, oh, yeah. <laughs> and like when you, I would get so mad when it would start lagging, and I'm like, still and lagging. then like someone would like snipe you while yep. you were lagging. That was me this that whole tour. Pissed me I off. I was trying so to stream much. on like days off, and I'd be playing player unknowns, and I'd be dead. <laughs> and then everyone that has to watch my stream, like your stream is really laggy. I was like, it's not my fault. <laughs> so uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are Trivium songs in in Guitar Hero, for example, right? I think so. Right. Yeah, I think. Have it's you like ever played one of your songs I in saw a someone, music um, game? It's, it's like fan question. programmed. Didn't someone make one? The sin in the sentence. Yeah. One of my friends, who's a YouTuber uh, and a Twitch guy named Jason Paradise, he was actually at our show in 2003 in Orlando. But he had someone program the sin in the sentence, and he played it and beat it like That's 100% crazy. perfect, which was really cool. How are you guys on, on those music terrible. games? Terrible. I'm Sucked. terrible. My favorite kind of game is definitely first-person shooters. And then uh, I, I've since realized, ever since streaming and getting more into video games and putting a lot of time into that, that I only like to really play competitive online, which is something most people don't like to do, but I like to just do that. Like the games that take like 500 hours, it takes too much because I like to collect and perfect everything. So it makes me want to get every single thing you have to do and then I just feel overwhelmed. We call that achievement whore. Yeah, <laughs> so with online, you just have to play and just try to beat people and it's, it's easier that way. Quickies, if you will. Yes. So are, are you, uh, do you try to psych your opponents? Do you speak to them? When uh, you no, play? no, because I'm doing the streaming live. I keep so the voice chat off, so I'm just talking to the yeah, chat. Yeah. Of course. yeah. Um, and I remember before getting into player unknowns, people were like, yeah, the first tip is to mute voice chat because you don't want to hear the horrible things other gamers are saying, so just mute it all the time. Fair enough. So I like to watch Corey play that NBA game with He's one friends. of those people saying like he, horrible things. Like, I will watch Corey on the no he doesn't say anything bad in there but he's just with his friends and like so they're kind of like all drinking getting drunk playing NBA and I'm kind of like just whenever we're rehearsing I'm like sitting up there watching Corey play with his friends like on the Corey head thing. it's stream. hilarious that would be very oh, interesting. Corey's like, streaming way more would be interesting than mine. yeah I think he's just like afraid though you know a couple <laughs> drinks in might get a little yeah, real risky the main dialect comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been talking about that. Anyone else <laughs> got, uh, or did you have something to add? No, you guys can ask anything. Anything. Like. Oh, another question. Um, the name Trivium, um, how did that come forth? 
the original singer of Trivium came up with it, and then when he left the band, he said, you guys can keep the name, and we split up the songs. We had like three or four original songs. He's like, I'll keep these, you keep those, you keep the name. <laughs> um, but it's Latin for three intersection, um, Old English for the three schools of learning, which were grammar, rhetoric, and logic. Um, he was only the singer in the band for like two months, and I remember he didn't want to sing on the early demos, so he didn't sing on them. <laughs> so <laughs> if you could change the name today, would you? No, no. no. I, like I, go I, back. We're in pretty time lucky and, to have like oh, yeah. it's a good a pretty, name. It's a really good, pretty name. decent name that like doesn't feel like it's like too too metal, but it definitely you know fits our. And sound. There's not too many words in it. It's not like a sentence band name or yeah. uh, the somethings or. The and somethings. we haven't had to like change it to like something else in another country because of anything. So that's right. Knock on that's wood. Right. Yeah. The, the triviums. And it's it's a hard band name to determine. We did what do kind that once. Of... We did that as a joke at a yeah. festival. Remember? Oh yeah. We had there was like. It was like 2006, and they're all like when all the indie bands had the with like a before. million the bands. So we like we put the triviums on our dressing room <laughs> yeah. to fit in. That's good. No, but, but that's kind of unique because I think most people in in famous bands today would like a second chance of naming their yeah, bands. It's crazy. Yeah. Sometimes. I will stick with it. <laughs> that's a good name. Any more questions? Right up front. Here we go. Or okay. Right here. My name is Sebastian. Hello. Uh, the guitar tone on the new record is amazing. Thank you. And I want to know what amps you use. It's a 5153. Yeah, believe. it was like the mini one too, right? It was like a small Yeah, um, I forget. Is that a 50 watt maybe? Yeah, it's like a yeah. less wattage. And what's interesting about guitar tone is less gain actually makes it sound bigger, which a lot of people think you have to crank it to 10. But even I remember reading a Hetfield thing and he said it's, they don't have too much gain. So fifty one fifty three into what cab was that? Mesa cab. Yeah, it was like a like an oversized maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, it was two different speakers in the cab. I mean, the main thing with like Josh, he's just such a great like not only producer but like as an engineer and just sonic guy. Um, just knows so much. It kind of was mind blowing to uh, work with him on that. Like every every single tone and and thing you hear on the album really is all about working together. The bass tone fitting with the guitar. Everything fitting with the drums, the vocals, and he, he really took our sound to another level. Cool. You happy with that? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You had a question over here. Hi, my name is Kalle. Uh, I'm wondering about an interview you did a few years ago where you said you had a picture of the band that it was cool to hate Trivium. That was sort of people's <laughs> mindset. Uh, so I'm wondering, what's your picture of the band today? What people think about you? Do you have something similar still? Or? That's definitely gone away. And yeah. I understand it, too, because we were like 18, 19 years old saying, we're going to be the biggest metal band in the world. We're going to take the world over. So all these older bands are like, who the hell are these teenagers saying this? Get off my lawn. Yeah, so it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so people are always mad at the young kids with the big ambitions, but that still happens to this day. Yeah, I mean, I'll see like newer bands that, I mean, they don't even say stuff like that, but it's just kind of natural, like when there's a new someone new in town and you know they're getting attention and I, I mean you just gotta like sit back and just kind of pay your dues yeah. that's what rock's about I think it's good it, it like kind of builds character because like when people are saying all that stuff it makes you want to either you, you get mad and like you go home or you want to play you want to prove be that you're you're a good band and that you mean something to the scene and that was what we tried to do yeah but you should never be ashamed of saying what your goals are if your goal is to be something like the best of something in the world you should absolutely say that and proclaim that and believe that and work towards it because that's that's the way we it's are kind of more of a motivation thing more than like we're definitely going to achieve some sort of level it was just in our mindset like we're going to push this as big as we can get it and that was sort of the motivating factor for the band in the beginning because we when you're starting off and you're in a van and everyone's like not getting sleep, like it's really hard at first. You're just like, ah, oh, this, this kind of sucks. So you have to have that thing in your head. Like we're going to it till you make it. Yeah, yeah, really. It's true. You got to like go up on stage in front of 10 people and put on a stadium show. And it really does help to, to motivate you. Very good. Um, else? Any more questions over here? Let me get to you. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Martin. Hey. Uh, which album cycle was the hardest for you in terms of like album reception? Uh, starting off, in a sense, he was hard because we were first of every yeah. tour. Surprisingly, you everyone would think that one would have been the best, easy. But that was hard. Like no one knew who we were. We'd sell like one T-shirt. We'd sleep in gas station parking lots, shower well, in a sink at an IHOP. The big Denny's. thing was like we did Ozfest, and that was like a huge breakthrough for us. Like we had a really 
yeah, we had a great reception. It was big. And then the next tour we did, uh, it was like we were in between Children of Bodom and Amon Amarth. It was like one of Amon Amarth's first tours in the States. And like we're in between these two amazing bands and we're like this new band that just came off OzFest. We're doing great. And that was like a gut punch because people were like, they were spitting on yeah, us like, Screw in this San band. Francisco. Like, Get the hell off stage. Yeah. You know, and, and it was like, we had to just deal with it. But it was great because I think experiencing OzFest and then just going and doing tours where everyone just is really receptive of your band. I don't know. It, it like really built a lot of character. And we had to fight every night to kind of prove that we were, you know, we were worth paying attention to. And even though maybe it was a tough tour, I mean, we definitely came away with a lot of fans. I think people Absolutely. appreciated that we were willing to like not give in, you know, we played through the booze or whatever. And it just like, you got to do it, you know, no matter what. And it, we took that with us beyond that tour. Yeah. We co-headlined with Slayer in like 2009 in the UK. And I remember in Manchester, cause the UK was one of our biggest places at the time. And we came out as kind of like a mix 50, 50 boo cheer. <clears throat> and I said, all right, everybody, how are you doing? And like 50% of the crowd cheers and the other 50% is quiet. I said, all right, everybody that fucking hates us make some noise. So then those 50% made really loud noise. Look, look, even the people that hate us, I got you to make noise for us. And then by the end of the show, we had like the whole crowd turned around. So you do have to fight. I got hit one, with piss a few times. Yeah, I got hit with piss, had people like waiting <laughs> like on the, I remember once we were supporting Lamb of God in America, came off stage and some guy's like, nice show, James. And he was like trying to push me, <laughs> like James Hetfield. He's like, yeah, who do you think you are? And I was. So you get you have to have shit like that. I remember one of the hardest tours for us was two weeks in the dead of winter in Canada. It was Dillinger Escape Plan headlining. The end, red, yellow, and Trivium was first. And we played, was that Toronto? Montreal. Montreal. And the crowd wouldn't even come to the floor to watch us. Like the floor was empty and everyone just like turned their back on us. So you gotta do it. You, you gotta, gotta start make somewhere. Do, you know, it's not always glamorous, but uh it was fun. You know, I, even those tours, we had yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, we, we like, I mean, we've always been the band, because where we came from, there wasn't like a scene of Florida bands that came up. It was like, you know, like New England, California, there were bands that were all buddies that all came out together. And we were always just kind of the odd man out. And we've always just been propped up by just our fans. Like when we play festivals, you know, it's just our fans there. You know, it's not the sides of the stage filled with other bands. It's always just our fans. And it's always been that way. We've been a band that's just been Trivium and our fans against the world. Very good. Uh, you mentioned uh, Florida. I have to ask this for my colleague over there. Uh, are you guys sports fans? Corey is. Um, like very casual. It we're kind of I'm kind of weird in Florida with sports. Uh, I'm in South Florida, so we have the Heat, we have the Marlins, the Dolphins, Panthers, Panthers, Panthers of course. That's what's, yeah, and uh, yeah, well, there's a like we have a Panthers fan uh, over here. My yeah, I just nice. follow jujitsu um, and esports. <laughs> but it, but the <laughs> thing is go. with South Florida, it's like very like. Fairweather fans, right. like the Panthers, like won the Stanley Cup, and everyone was a big Panthers fan. And then they sell everyone off, and now everyone's like, like no one goes to the games. And then it'll it'll be that cycle. In it's not like um, like New England, like Corey's a big Patriots fan. Like that is diehard fan base. Like even if they lost every game, like fans will go. Like, South Florida is kind of weird with sports like that. Wow, we have those here too. The, the uh, used fair to, weather fans. What's what's a fair weather? Just kind of like when things are going good, they're, everyone they're loves with them, it. Yeah. yeah, we have the the opposite would be uh, Hamabir, right? Anyways, uh, last question, I think. <laughs> no, they're they're sticking to their uh, to their team anyway. Uh, you had another question, right? <laughs> I think we have time for one more. So, all right. Um, Third time's the charm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just spewing out the questions. Um, how should I put it? I mean, with the sort of modern modern day, it's pretty hard for, or at least what I've seen for newer bands to really sh to really shine because there are so many different ways to market yourself, and there are plenty of music. So it feels like people are very restricted to to what they listen to. Do you have any tips for like I don't know upcoming bands um, yeah. on ways to sort of get yourself out there and get yourself well known in a way? I guess like in the beginning, you have to really take the time and figure out what your band is. You need to rehearse. You need to take take the opportunity for like not having the spotlight on you to do a lot of that stuff. And I can't suggest enough for bands like do not rush into trying to get deals and stuff before you're ready. Like do all the preparation, figure out what you are, have a good idea, and then 
you know, when you have that moment to where maybe a label finds you or the right opportunity comes around, you'll be ready. And just always know that with the way things are today, things are always changing. Even for us, we have to update and constantly figure out new ways to get Trivium out in front of people. I mean, even with like the streaming, it's it's just a new thing that's there that you can utilize. And it, it takes a lot to like learn something new like that. But I think people now just have to know that every time you come out, there's a new technology, there's something new. You got to figure out how to make your band a part of it and utilize it to the way you know your band is. Yeah, even at our level, it's still always a I don't want to say it's like a struggle, but it's like it's always work. There is always work you have to put in, and it's never exactly easy, which I like about it. I like that you have to work in this, and you have to stay on top of your instrument. But if you do things like that from the very beginning, like always want to practice and want to be the best at your instrument and make the best songs, be the best performer and the best person, that's, I think that's, a, that's it's exhausting, but it's a great thing. And you have to carry that on from the beginning till even where we're at. Nice. I, I had a good time. How about you? Yeah. Thank you guys for coming Tuck's out. Naked. Thank you, Tuck. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you, Paulo. Thank you, Matt. I um, appreciate it. You've already uh, told me, but when can we expect you back, sort of, uh, for a live gig? Hopefully at some point earlier next year. Nice. We're, we're planning it out now. So. And hopefully, a he probably a headlining tour. Yeah, I think definitely. Definitely Very a headliner. Good. We'll see everyone there, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you once again. Trivium. Tuck's naked. We said not.